A block of mass 2 kg is sliding down a plane inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, as shown in the diagram below. And then there's a coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the plane, which is 0 0.2. Then the first question, 2.1.1, we're supposed to define the term kinetic frictional force. So kinetic frictional force is the force that opposes the motion of a moving object relative to a surface. Let's go ahead and look at 2.1.2. Draw a labeled free body diagram for the block while it is in motion. So the marker location is 3. And like I've said previously, if the marker location for a free body diagram is 3, then you should know that your free body diagram will have three forces. If the marker location is three and you have two forces on your free body diagram, you're doing something wrong. And another point I always make is that when you're drawing the free body diagram, before you start thinking about a lot of things, put weight first. Everything is going to come after you put weight. Right, and then now we can go ahead and look at our object. Is our object resting on a surface? Yes, it is. So we have normal force right here. Uh, what else do we have? We have the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we have friction. The object is going down the incline. So our friction must be up the incline. So we have frictional force up the incline. Obviously with our weight, uh, we know that we have the perpendicular component, Fg perpendicular, and the parallel component fg parallel you don't have to include fg parallel and fg perpendicular but most likely you will have to use it when you calculate let's do 2.1.3 calculate the acceleration of the block right before we start analyzing our problem f net is equals to ma these are just standard things now we can go ahead and analyze our problem. We have Fg parallel and we have the frictional force. Those are the two forces we are interested in. Why am I saying so? Our object is moving parallel to the incline. So we are only interested in the forces that are moving parallel to the incline. Right. So how do we then set up our equation? So what you want to see here is that the force pulling the object minus all the forces that are opposing as you can see the object is going down the incline this is because of fg parallel and then the force that is opposing is the frictional force so we're going to say fg parallel minus frictional force is equals to m a now we just need to find fg parallel let's do that uh, separately so fg parallel is equals to mg sine of Theta, where m is the mass 2 kg multiplied by 9,8 sine of 30 degrees. So what is fg equals to? This is 2 multiplied by 4.9. And then now we can calculate frictional force. Frictional force is equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. The coefficient is 0 0.2. And then our normal force, if you look at our free body diagram, the normal force is being balanced out by Fg perpendicular. So the normal force is equal to Fg perpendicular in this instance. Where Fg perpendicular is Mg cos of theta. So we have 2 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by cos of 30 degrees. So our frictional force is equal to 2 multiplied by 1.6974 so now we can substitute back into our equation fg parallel that is 2 multiplied by 4.9 minus the frictional force that is 2 multiplied by 1.6974 this is equals to ma the mass of our object is 2 kgs. The acceleration is what we are interested in. It will be easy to see what we need to do here. We are dividing by 2 
on both sides so let's just go ahead and do that and we get in an acceleration that is equals to 3.2 meters per second squared down the incline this right here is 4.9 and not 14.9 but anyway stories that is 2.1.3 let's do 2.2 in two adjacent buildings of the same size, the two walls nearest one another are 7 meters apart, and the walls furthest from one another are 35 meters apart, as the diagram below illustrates. Right, you can see there. And then the question is saying, use an appropriate calculation to show that the gravitational force that the two inner walls exert on each other is 25 times bigger than that of the two outer walls on each other. And then they're saying we need to show that Fg of the inner walls is equal to 25 times of the outer walls. What is Fg? Let's start there. Fg is equal to G m1 m2 divided by r squared. So everything else is constant except from the distance between the two walls. So that is the only variable we are changing. Let's start with the inner walls. Let's start with the inner walls. So for the inner walls, we're going to have Fg of the inner walls being, let's just say Fg inner, being equals to G M1 M2 divided by R squared. The inner walls are 7 meters apart. So we're going to have 7 squared. We know what 7 squared is equals to. So we're going to have G M1 M2 divided by 49 uh, these are the inner walls now we can go ahead and set up the same equation but now for the outer walls the outer walls are 35 meters apart from each other so we're going to have fg of the outer walls being equals to g m1 m2 divided by 35 squared so g m1 m2 divided by what is 35 squared uh, that is 1225 so here we have fg for the inner walls and here we have fg for the outer walls now we need to show that fg for the inner walls is equal to 25 multiply by 25 multiply by fg of the outer walls let's go ahead and see if this is true so fg of the inner walls we have g m1 m2 divided by 49 this is apparently supposed to be equals to 25 multiply by g m1 m2 divided by 125 g m1 m2 divided by 49 is indeed equals to g m1 m2 divided by 49.